intimidating thing about tonight, I think, is the fact that I'm one of the six oldest people here. <laughs> Back in those days, we were always the youngest, but uh, this is a great crowd. You guys have done a marvelous job. Jose, congratulations. Uh, we follow what you guys are doing, and, and it's a great, terrific job. Um, a little over a half a century ago, some gentlemen sitting at that table over there and I got together, 13 people in the commons at Weston Hall, and uh, we decided to form a local fraternity because there wasn't any other fraternity on campus that uh, seemed to fit the needs of our particular group. We had, uh, we were multiracial, multireligious, uh, multi-everything, and there just didn't seem to be anything that fit, and we decided to form our local fraternity. Um, we called it Kappa Delta Chi. Uh, there were 13 of us, and uh, I think the amazing thing is right now, well, within a month or two, uh, each of us was to go out and get two friends, try to get two friends, bring them back, and very shortly thereafter, we had 38 members, we were um, <coughs> ready to buy, not buy, but get a house. And we signed a contract to rent to 17 Warren Street. And I don't think any of us will ever forget that first day. Uh, all 38 of us, several hundred beer cans were stacked. <laughs> With the new pull tabs. <laughs> that marvelous moment, and none of us will ever forget it. And I think it's... Uh, it's a testament to the brotherhood, it's a testament to uh, the loyalty, the tradition, that a um, little more than 10% of the original charter members of Kappa Delta Chi are sitting right at that table. We have uh, wow. John Barrett. <laughs> Carl Belt right here. Bob Trongong. organization. Um, having started it uh, all those years back with those few guys, uh, I, I look at this and I am just overwhelmed. I mean, uh, my wife and I have four children, nine grandchildren, eight of them are boys. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of Theta Chi's coming up. <laughs> the, uh, Best thing about uh, all you young guys, especially the new class coming in, you're 10, you have a long way to go. You have 50 years before you catch up to us. <laughs> but uh, the best thing about uh, getting to this age uh, is earning the best job in the world, and that's being a grandparent. Mm -hmm. When we sit down at dinner on holidays, birthdays, what have you, and all our kids and grandkids are together, we're uh, 19. And uh, I look out and I say, my God, here we go say to my wife, look what we created here. I look out tonight, and I see 100 brothers, and their dates, and wives, and partners, and I say, look what we created. It is a marvelous, wonderful <laughs> classes are these days, but back when, when we were at NCE, it wasn't even NJIT, of course, uh, we had 28 hours of classes a week, four or five hours of homework every night. It was uh, returned to the factory the next day, because that was pretty much what we thought of it uh, as. And the fraternity was formed out of a frustration of that rigorous schedule that we had. We needed a place to get together, to relax, to enjoy each other's company, to get away from the rigors of uh, the everyday uh, toil at the factory. Um, so in 1964, there came a day when we graduated from that place, and it's one of those happiest days of your life and worst days of your life, saddest days. Not the happiest, there are a lot of happy occasions. I have personally been blessed. I've been many, many, many happy occasions. One of the happiest was graduating from NCE and getting away from that. <laughs> However, in the same day, it was one of the saddest. 
because on that day, we had to say goodbye to our brothers in our house. Not forever, of course. But today, thanks to all of you guys, especially Mark, we thank you very much, Jose, the committee, Tom Yusowitz, who I know has done marvelous work in the past. Tonight, we say hello again, and we're happy about it. Thank you. I would like to step back in time a little bit, though, and first of all, welcome everyone, the brothers, the pledges, their families and partners, and friends. Uh, I'm, I'm really touched by what I see here tonight. Um, as John said 50 years ago, and by the way, let's have another one before 50 years, okay? When you do. Yeah! Uh, it was a residential school. People all over the world were in resident or studying there. And I was pledging a fraternity. And it was so important making the transition from high school. Because back in those days, the high schools, in my opinion, did not prepare as nearly as well as they do today for the transition to college. Going from high school to college was really a shock. And at Mines, being in the fraternity, you had someone that could help you. Uh, you had someone that you could go to a football game with if you had time. Occasionally, we'd stop at the Coors Free Bar because that's the home of Coors Brewery. <laughs> but I transferred to NCE and was living in Bloomfield, and all of a sudden, I became a commuter student. And as John said, it was a grind. I mean, we were carrying 21 credits a semester. Uh, every night, I was up till 12, 1 o'clock doing homework, weekends. We really had no time to socialize with one another. There was no one there to help you at night if you had a problem. There weren't any computers. There were no emails. There, you couldn't do anything. What the best you could do was call somebody up on the phone. So, John, and by the way, if we were the first class of industrial engineers out of NCE, had we graduated the year before, we would have been part of the mechanical engineering curriculum with what they called a management option, taking business courses, law courses, etc. So consequently, we were a fairly small, what, 20 guys maybe? Uh, although we did have very close friends like Joe Laco and the other disciplines. And I had checked out some of the other fraternities CE. Some of them didn't even have houses. And those that did, it wasn't the kind of place that you would take your girlfriend. Um, so we started talking about creating a new fraternity. We met at Weston Hall. Weston Hall, I think it just opened. It was the first year. There were only two buildings then. It was what, Everhart Hall? Everhart. Weston Hall. Yeah. And, uh, on the rare occasion that we'd have a break between classes and we weren't cramming for the next test, we got to talking about having a fraternity. And it came about very quickly. I think that was in our junior year, sophomore, was a sophomore year. And very quickly, um, we, we winnowed through the various national fraternities. We decided upon Beta Chi. Um, they even waived the one-year colony period, because we had, we had matured so quickly as in terms of we had a house. And it, it really helped me. I mean, I still commuted, but um, having brothers that you could turn to, that you could socialize with, that could uh, run the gauntlet between Warren Street and High Street. <laughs> <laughs>
apologize. Like a lot of my contemporaries, we haven't stayed as in as close a touch with the fraternity as perhaps we should have. And I'm also going to make a little sales pitch here. I've been to the firehouse. The alumni needs to kick in. We really got to help these guys. It's a marvelous place. It's a gem, but we've got to make it better. Uh, I mean, these guys have the same heavy workload that we have. They have to have a decent place to live and to stay. I'm very proud. I'm proud to have been involved in the inception of this. I'm proud of where it is today. And uh, I just, I can't tell you how 